and we would love to hear from him what dirty features trying to get you in this uh, autonomous domain. George Hertz, uh, I don't know if many of you know, but George is uh, the CEO of uh, Karma.ai. They just launched an amazing uh, product um, which I use personally, so I'm a big fan of George. And George uh, is, uh, I don't know many people know that he is the pers uh, first person to jailbreak iOS. Uh, um, and thanks to him, <laughs> uh, we have uh, you know, this uh, capability now. Um, he, um, he will be sharing his perspective of autonomy from his vantage point uh, and uh, what Karma.ai is doing. Um, and, and, um, and, and you must have heard of their product, uh, Panda, you know. So, because he, so I think just want to make sure. Few quick points. Uh, one thing that I want to highlight is that, and this shows the, uh, the, the enormous of this problem that these guys are trying to solve. So, first of all, the hardware is very expensive, and that's something that George is trying to address. Right now, if you build a nice fancy car with LiDARs and all, you're talking about 70 to 150K. What George is doing is that, you know, maybe like uh, less than a few Ks, you can have uh, some level of autonomy in the car and which you will uh, dig deep. Second point is how many miles that you need. So, in, uh, it keeps increasing. So, 20, right now, Google has at 20 million miles that they have driven, actually. So, what it means is that the more data you have, the more accurate your modeling would be. And that's a challenge that you, you need to solve. And uh, I think, how do you solve it? Again, George will touch upon it, that's how you're solving it. Um, and then, uh, I think the data is again a problem, that we're generating a tons of uh, amount of data, like from one terabyte uh, data. These numbers keep changing, but at the end, what we say is that a lot of data is generated uh, from these kind of sensors and that we have. What problem are we trying to solve? So, the problem we're trying to solve is that there are 1.3 million people that die in road accidents every year, uh, 30,000 are in, in North America. And we're trying to, uh, one of the, the business case or use cases to make that completely, uh, you know, address that and then um, and alleviate that. And then obviously there are other problems like congestion um, and then the other areas that we need to touch upon. So with that, I think I want to lay the foundation and then I would like to invite uh, George to uh, go over his presentation. And, um, and I think he did a big launch, so I think maybe touch upon that. So let me turn on your slide. This whole space is insanely sad. Uh, there's, don't listen to what is put out by marketing people and by business people. That's all you're hearing from in this space. Please look at it for yourself. How many of you have actually gotten to ride in one of these cars? Probably, if you guys have experienced one, it's Tesla Autopilot, right? How many have ridden in a Waymo? How many have ridden Tesla Autopilot? So there we go, right? You see what's real and you see what's not real, and this is, this is, it, it honestly it depresses me so much. Um, you know, why play a game if everybody is playing by a different set of completely rigged rules where, you know, what does Drew Carey say in, in that show? It's like, it's all made up and the points don't matter. I mean, that's what it seems like. Um, so, my name is George Hotz. I'm the president of Kamei. Uh, in 2015, I rigged up an Acura to drive itself, and I, I met with the one and I'm like, uh, they wanted to build a vision system for autopilot that wasn't based on mobile. I'm like, I could do this in a few months, and I did. Um, then you do this, and then you're like, okay, well, this will be easy, right? The Elon is autopilot. This will be easy to, to sell to the car makers, right? Um, no, no, it's it's not easy because the car makers, I mean, finally now we could test the stock. Again, sad. Uh, there's a Paul Graham tweet from five years ago saying the Model S is the iPhone of cars. Um, the difference between the Model S and the iPhone is when the iPhone came out, all the phone manufacturers were like, oh, oh crap, we gotta, we, gotta, we gotta catch up to that. And all the, the car makers laugh at anyone. They're like, no one's gonna buy an electric car. All right, um, look where you are today. Uh, so yeah, we make this thing. Uh, this is our new one, it's called the Kamba 2. It's $999, you can put it in your compatible Honda, Toyota, Jeep, GM, Chrysler, it supports 63 different cars, and it basically gives your car Tesla autopilot equivalent functionality. Um, you can drive for hours on the highway without touching anything. Actually, in that way, it's even better than autopilot. Uh, we use a forward-facing camera uh, to monitor the driver. Um, it's like how you should do it. GM does this with Super Cruise, too. There's really, there's three big systems on the market today. There's autopilot, there's Super Cruise, um, and there's us. Uh, so, maybe go to the next slide. Um, this is what this thing looks like mounted in a car. 
Um, it's our slogan is make driving chill. That's another thing. People are always like, all self-driving cars, our goal is to reduce accidents, our goal is safety. No, safety is a necessity, it's not a goal. Right? Safety doesn't sell products. What, what are you gonna do? You get a fear monger? Right? Like this isn't no. The slogan is make driving chill. Safety is just an added bonus, right? The purpose of cars is not to be safe. The purpose of cars is to get people from point A to point B. Safety is just something you need to do and need to have in your product. So I hate this rhetoric around it, but again, you know, who, who uh, comes up with all of this? Um, so we're uh, completely open source. Um, all the code that runs on here, it's called OpenPilot. It's 100% open source. Um, honestly, you can't give this stuff away. You can't give this stuff away. There are companies now, there are ADAS companies now, trying, oh, okay, got all their business development people, they're trying to pitch to OEMs. And they're trying to pitch something that's worse than what we're literally giving away for free with an MIT license. This thing is really good. It's a thousand bucks. If you have a supported car, go buy one and try it. Like, uh, read or go on YouTube, search for OpenPilot. You'll, you'll find Drives, not put out by us. Again, it's not our marketing material. These are our users. Sitting at the wheel, watching the car drive for hours and hours and hours. Um, uh, so yeah, we have um, the user thing is old. Uh, we have over 1,500 monthly active users, and that's our cumulative miles. Oh, Waymo has 20 million miles. We have 15, right? Like it's, it's not, this nothing. This is, this is nothing when it comes to it. Tesla has billions and billions and billions. Uh, and that's another great myth of this thing, like, oh, 20 million miles, that's so much. It's, it's really nothing. This thing is just getting started. Um, we're growing exponentially. Uh, yeah, and you want to solve level five economy, that's how you do it. The only way to really do it is with big data, with incremental improvements, and with an end-to-end -end solution. When people are trying to break things down into perception and planning, they've already lost. And I think one point I want to highlight is that Commodore AI moved from, they started in Bay Area and they're now based in San Diego. Okay, thank you, George. I think the next are over time. Um, I would say, as our good friend Alex Roy, uh, is he's the uh, podcast, Autonomous, which is a very good uh, uh, podcast in the autonomous uh, space. He always say that uh, in the levels of autonomy, only the even number counts. Uh, and I think I would agree with him because uh, level two, I think, really solved the problem of keeping the driver alert not only for passenger car, also for commercial vehicles. Level four is the first level you can take the driver out and you still can uh, accomplish a lot of uh, unique novics by doing so. Level two, level three, and level five probably are not so much having a business value. Level three, as you may know, is uh, supposedly a very fully or very autonomous, but the driver needs to be engaged at full time. It is very difficult for the driver to trust this vehicle and to keep alert, uh, but at the same time. So that really leads to some safety concerns from uh, from our perspective. And level five is, I think, uh, for the completion of the um, for, for the levels, right? You are asking this vehicle to drive across the desert, uh, no map whatsoever, uh, you know, anytime, anywhere. So we believe that level four is a good use case for trucking, uh, just given the uh, situation I have mentioned in the trucking space. And uh, level two is good for passenger car, probably in the near future, to be implemented uh, for, uh, the, uh, for you and I to use. Uh, it's a total myth that the levels are different. Uh, two, three, four, and five are exactly the same. The only difference between them is who's taking liability. In level two, the driver's always liable. In level five, the driver is never liable. This is made by business people. It's not made by engineers. But you can say this is a level two system. Well, what does that mean? It means that on its own, it makes more mistakes than a human would. But it's not a qualitative difference. As we drive mistakes down to zero, eventually one day, well, okay, when does it become level five? When it's 10% safer than a human, 2x safer, 10x safer, right? It's just a question of how many disengagements uh, you have. Um, this whole dichotomy of, look, if you're building a system, if you're building a level two system that detects lanes on the road, you've already lost. What is a lane, right? Oh, you gotta look for little white marks. Well, you've lost, right? The way that we train this, it's completely end to end. Uh, we look at where humans drive in the scenario. What is the definition of driving? It's what humans do when they drive. If you're thinking about a limited operational domain, you're never going to solve level five, but you're not even going to build a good level two system. 
So why not solve the whole thing and then make it, you know, quantitatively better over time? There's no qualitative difference. Okay, thank you. And so next question is: uh, there seem to be a split in the uh, in the industry between the sensors to be used. So there's a whole lidar camp, which is everybody, and there is a visual uh, sensing, which a Tesla is uh, a big proponent of. And it's been going on for a while, and I think like uh, George mentioned, that the only car that actually are in the road, whether it's level 2, 2.5, whatever you call it, are the Teslas. So the question to all of you would be that, uh, do you feel that vision-only sensing um, can be a solution for uh, solving these problems, or LiDAR is a must? I'll be fast. How many of you could drive a car? How many of you have a LiDAR? There's the answer. <laughs> Anybody else have an opinion on that? Or? Well, I would say uh, pragmatically we got to get rid of the LiDAR, but we use it in our university vehicles currently because it makes some things a lot simpler. So yeah, I like I like I like vision radar systems. Too simple is also a vision-based solution. Uh, our campus is actually uh, over a thousand meters away, which is uh, um, quite substantial, especially for trucking, you have a longer stopping distance for uh, big rigs. Uh, we do believe a camera-based solution will be much stronger than LiDAR-based solution just because of the range of perception distance. Uh, for a best LiDAR system today, you probably can see uh, around 200 meters, uh, but for cameras, you can see much further. But I think a combination of sensor really increase redundancy and uh, bring us a very stable system. Yeah, I mean, it's just all about redundancy and kind of giving the impression to people that they are safe, right? I mean, yes, we do have two eyes and uh, we trust our eyes. Sometimes we take, the, take our eyes off the road and we still expect the car to drive itself. Uh, but leaving that aside, I mean, if I gave you a car with just one camera, people de do tend to get a little bit nervous. So it's probably more of a phase where we need to tell you that, oh, there's more than one uh, sensor that's taking care of you. So it's all about no pun intended perception, but uh, over time, yes, I do think uh, vision will, uh, I mean, it's going to improve enough to really make us feel safe in our cars. But it's just more of an interim to say, hey, I've got multiple sensors, redundancy, more inputs to make you feel much safer. Thank you. No, um, I mean, a quick comment on perception. I want people to be scared using these systems. Uh, I don't want people to feel safe because none of them are better than humans. People should be scared and people should be ready to take over at any time. Hi, right, thank you. I'm just curious if you think that 5G with its low latency and higher reliability is important or a necessity for level four, level five? And if that's not the major impediment, what are the two or three major impediments to the adoption of level four or five? Thank you. It's all completely AI. Uh, there's no difference at all between 4G and 5G. 5G is mostly driven by hype. It is 5G is still nowhere near reliable enough to have the cloud in the loop for a level four driving system. So I, Sean, I, I just sent you another. Um, I think you leaving the impression that uh, uh, all these redundant sensors and uh, the cameras and multiple is only about a perception of safety rather than actually required for uh, safety. And I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, I mean, yeah, no, sorry, I didn't mean to leave that impression. Uh, what we are saying, what I'm saying is that, yes, the technology will get better and better over time. Definitely, it's, it's software, it's, uh, it's science. We can solve the vision problems. We can make it very, very safe. Today, um, you know, we, we, we hear many, many potential customers asking this question. Okay, hey, you know what? I, I, I mean, I don't feel very safe in a Tesla. Uh, I mean, this is verbatim quoting someone. Um, do you have a LiDAR? So that question comes up very often, right? We do, do you have a radar? How many radars do you have? It's today people's, uh, people definitely feel safer when you have multiple redundant sensors. So we do have to address that as well because we are at the end of the day selling a vehicle or leasing a vehicle to an end customer. People with one eye can drive cars very safely. Uh, when they do crash, it's largely because they're drunk, distracted, or asleep, not because their eye failed. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. I think we'd like to give a big hand of applause to uh, the